Project Nexus. On December 12, 2012, a piece of news stunned many Chinese people. The European Union ended its 20-year-long anti-dumping measures against Chinese lighters. Just how significant are Chinese lighters, and why have they left the West powerless? The ancient human fascination and fear of fire evolved into mastery, reshaping human history entirely. As human civilization progressed, so did the demand for fire. In pre-modern China, inventions like the fire drill, akin to lighters, already existed. The fire drill, also known as the fire sickle, was a portable fire-starting tool developed in ancient China. Its production method was meticulous, soaking sweet potato vines in water, flattening them, mixing with combustible materials like cotton and reed, then drying and incorporating sulfur, nitrate, and fragrant resins to form ropes that ignited with a twist. Considered the first generation of lighters, this technology traveled to Europe along the Silk Road. The true inception of lighters, however, arrived in the 19th century when German chemist Johann Wolfgang Doberiner accidentally discovered that platinum sponge ignited hydrogen. This chemical phenomenon sparked his innovation. Using the principle of generating hydrogen gas through a reaction between dilute sulfuric acid and zinc, Doberiner constructed the world's first lighter from test tubes, glass tops, nozzles, and platinum sponge. Unfortunately, its large size, glass casing, and fragility hindered its widespread adoption. The world's first mass-produced lighter actually originated in Austria, predating the famous Zippo lighter by a decade. In 1906, a man named Julius Meister established a button factory in Austria, primarily supplying military uniforms. However, the invention of the zipper by Swedish-American Gideon Sundback in 1914 disrupted button sales. Amidst World War I, Meister, hearing frontline soldiers' complaints about European dampness rendering matches useless, felt compelled to act. Recognizing the surplus of spent cartridge casings, he attempted to fashion fuel lighters from them, using rotating metal buttons and flints to ignite wicks soaked in saltpetri. Unfortunately, Meister's IMCO company's first-generation lighters debuted just as the war ended. After obtaining patents, IMCO developed over 70 distinct bullet-shaped lighters, instantly popular among aristocrats. IMCO lighters made appearances in films like Kung Fu and Molina. Soon, luxury brands like Cartier and Dunhill entered the lighter market alongside Zippo, which accompanied American soldiers through wars. At that time, the predominant lighters used piezoelectricity. When users rotated the wheel by hand, it created friction with the flint below, sparking ignition of flammable gas. The flints primarily consisted of cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, and praseodymium, all light rare earth elements. It became a saying that lighting cigarettes with kerosene was superior, as butane replaced kerosene as the main fuel. Lighters once symbolized luxury and status, akin to high-end mechanical watches, until the 1960s. The piezoelectric effect, utilizing pressure on certain materials to generate an electric potential, dramatically improved safety, not requiring pre-ignition and reducing bomb risk. Anyone who has disassembled a piezoelectric lighter knows it contains a black piezoelectric igniter. Pressing it generates an electric arc. In that instant, the igniter's spring applies pressure to strike the piezoelectric ceramic, causing it to discharge sparks, known as an electric arc. Although piezoelectric lighters produce high voltages, their currents are minimal, only a few microamperes. Many have experienced a mild shock from them. In the 1960s, Japanese innovation led to the creation of disposable electronic lighters using piezoelectricity. These lighters comprised over 20 inexpensive components like plastic, spark generators, wind guards, and igniters. However, following the signing of the Hiroshima Accord between Japan and the United States, the yen appreciated significantly, prompting the relocation of manufacturing industries to China, including the lighter industry and its technology. 
China capitalized on lower labor and material costs, lowering lighter prices. Soon, China became the world's largest lighter producer, manufacturing billions annually, capturing over 80% of the global market share. In 1992, China exported 50.86 million lighters to the United States, which surged to 175 million just a year later, reaching an astounding 280 million in 1994. Western-made disposable lighters cost around $2, while Chinese exports sold for $1, exerting pressure on American domestic lighter manufacturers. To combat China's lighter industry, the American Lighter Manufacturers Association lobbied for the Child Resistance Regulation, mandating child-resistant mechanisms to prevent infant misuse and disasters. The law took effect in July 1994, significantly impacting Chinese lighter exports. China's Lighter Industry Association actively engaged in technical research, as five mainstream child lock technology patents were held by Western companies. Chinese enterprises navigated the challenge, both avoiding patents and developing new technologies. Finally, in 1996, the first compliant Chinese lighter emerged, followed by many others. China quickly re-entered the American market, experiencing 50% compound growth by 2001. The lighter, with over 20 components involving chemical processes like injection molding, sintering, rubber molding, plastic stretching and adhesion, as well as precision machining like material stamping, bending, plating, spraying, and ultrasonic welding maintained low raw material costs. This demonstrated China's continuous manufacturing development. However, in July 1998, under lobbying pressure from companies like BIC and Swedish Match, the European Union also initiated CR regulations. Additionally, in 1995 and 1999, the EU increased tariffs on Chinese lighters, even launching an anti-dumping investigation in 2002. The American ASDM standard was released in 2001, enforcing its adoption for lighters entering the US market. These actions illustrate the ruthless nature of business wars and the challenges faced by Chinese enterprises abroad. Leveraging WTO trade principles, organized enterprises submitted opposing opinions to EU and US agencies, arguing against the irrationality of regulations. In November 2002, the proposal for the American ASDM standard was rejected. In December 2003, the EU announced the discontinuation of CR regulations, only to introduce a new version in 2006, which took effect a year later. From 1994 to 2007, American and European lighter companies attempted to use regulations and patents to erect trade barriers against Chinese lighters. On December 12, 2012, the EU also abandoned its anti-dumping investigation into Chinese lighters, concluding this invisible war with victory for Chinese enterprises, albeit with lessons learned. In 2003, Wanzhou had over 500 lighter manufacturers, with over 80% of products exported overseas. If the West targeted Chinese lighters, it would devastate Wanzhou's industry. When negotiating with French company BIC, Chinese enterprises faced disdain and defamation, labeled as copycats producing counterfeits. All Chinese innovations were easily branded as imitations. However, the primary reason for China's manufacturing success was its affordability, as people naturally gravitate toward value-for-money products. This was human nature. The primary reason for the low cost of Chinese lighters was the inexpensive labor and decent manufacturing processes. What's your perspective on the evolution of Chinese lighters and their impact on global markets? Have you experienced firsthand the resilience of Chinese manufacturing? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into the intersection of history, technology, and global commerce. Your engagement drives us to explore further and delve deeper into the stories that shape our world. Thank you for being part of our community, e-manufacturing. 
drop your comments below and join the conversation.